right so welcome back um, so we can see now that the the rope uh, Mona has actually finished searching for the rope gadgets and then if we go into program files immunity Inc immunity debugger we can see here we do have two sets of files we have a rope.txt and then we have the rope underscore chain.txt which Mona has actually generated so I'm just going to open this file and you can see here we do have um, the app you know some some information and then we do have some of the stuff that um, Mona has actually put up as output so if you're searching here closely we do have um, virtual protect okay so rope chain for virtual protect written in Ruby and uh, we have another one written in C but because our you know our expert is actually written in Python we're going to be using um, the Python um, rope gadget so we found one here just want to scroll down to see if we don't have any more so we're going to be using the one for the virtual protect so I'm just going to copy out the all the way from here copy all of the rope gadget and then go to our um, offensive Kali box and then include the rope gadgets so just, be just below the, the shell code I'm going to paste the rope chain right so we've got our rope chain pasted so the, the the tricky bit in this is you know because python is actually very sensitive to indentation so we have to make sure that the indentation is right if not the exploit is actually going to fail so what needs to happen is we need to move this rope to the edge and the rope gadgets here I'm just going to move it by um, three steps so once with using the space bar so one two three and everything else I'm going to move them by four spaces to the right so one two so I'm going to move this four so I'm going to do that for every single one So the reason I'm shifting it to the to the left is because I just want to make sure we get rid of any white spaces. So remove that by three spaces and also the return by one, two, three spaces. Right. So what we need to do again is we need to include um, a struct library. So I'm just going to put an import struct. So we're going to import a struct library 
in order for the exploit to work and then I'm going to comment out the just going to copy this first and comment this out and then what we're going to do is we're going to replace the EIP the instruction uh, we actually had for the EIP with the with the rope chain instruction instead so we're going to take out the jump ESP instruction and then replace that with ROP underscore chain okay because that is already defined here okay so we need to include that as part of the the exploit so everything appears fine at the moment everything appears fine so I'm going to save this and then restart the SL mail application Start the SML application once again. Go back in here. Set up our netcat listener and send the exploit. So oh, there was an error there, so I think I tapped that wrongly in the port struct library. Right, so just make sure that's corrected. Okay, we do have our let cast this now port 443 and then we send the exploit again. And you can see the exploit has actually succeeded. We can confirm the IP address of the machine and we can see using the rope gadgets we've actually been able to bypass and defeat the DEP memory um, protection that what we did, you know that prevented us initially from executing our exploits. So in summary, this actually shows that you know DEP is not effective enough. A well-crafted um, buffer overflow exploit would actually um, defeat DEP using rope gadgets. So I hope with this um, explanation and demonstration, you have more understanding of uh, rope chains and how they work, and also how they can be can use to bypass DEP and ASLR. Okay, so thank you for watching.